कोस्टल फीचर्स द कोस्टल फीचर्स में अगेन टू और थ्री फीचर्स वन फीचर यू शुड नो इज क्लिफ फर्स्ट डिस्क्राइब इट वॉट इज इट इट इज अ नियर वर्टिकल फेस इट इज ऑलमोस्ट अ परपेंडिकुलर प्रेसिपाइस इट ओवर लुक्स द सी इट इज एन इरोशनल फीचर नाउ क्लिफ्स Uh, they require some conditions so one important condition is that there must be hard and there must be stable rocks otherwise the the face the cliff typically looks like almost a vertical face like this and we have waves here so this face can remain vertical they can remain stable only when the rocks are hard rocks hard rocks and the face is stable for stability what we require is there should be a horizontal beds or the beds must dip landward for stable rocks okay the rocks must be hard the rocks must be horizontal beds and the beds must or they can dip landwards what i mean by dipping landwards is so this is the cliff either the rocks are vertical uh, horizontal like this or if they are dipping the they must dip towards the land like this okay so this is one layer of rock we this is another layer of rock this could be another layer of rock and if if the rocks are dipping seawards if the rocks the inclination of the beds okay so this will slip this will slip this will slip and a cliff will not form so for the cliff to form i said you need to have a vertical face you need to have a perpendicular precipice erosional features hain and the rocks must be hard the rocks must be stable either the beds are horizontal or the beds are dipping landwards the beds dip landwards okay and another very important factor for cliff formation is that there should be continuous undercutting by the waves and there should be quick removal quick removal what we mean by basal sapping basal sapping there should be quick removal of the rocks it basically means that if okay the waves are here the waves must keep on cutting here keep on cutting here and whatever debris rocks are formed here the rocks must be removed very effectively only then can the surface here be almost a perpendicular precipice and this down cutting here this can form caves these can form caverns it's a notch at the base of the cliff so there should be continuous undercutting and followed by removal of the broken rocks and sediments from the base this process is called as basal sapping b a s a l s a p p i n g so essentially i am answering a question what are cliffs what are the conditions in which cliffs are formed and now what are the types of cliffs types of cliffs may you remember mainly two clear types one are the resistant cliffs these are made up of hard rocks these are made up of horizontal beds and the most common rock which can form is chalk chalk is a not the one that we know of uska the form original hota is pretty resistant they may be soluble but they are pretty resistant for erosion yes when they collapse so if this is the cliff if there is undercutting it collapses then a new face is formed the cliff face has moved back then there is undercutting here there is collapse and a new face is formed and this is again moving back so if the cliff face collapses it's a kind of a backward retreat of the slopes so type of cliffs may there are resistant cliffs made up of hard rocks and horizontal beds the most common being chalk the most common type of rock is chalk and the second type of cliffs are weak cliffs weak cliffs are made up of okay softer sediments they could be made up of clay they are made up of uh, mud stone they may be made up of shale and they will not remain as cliff for long they will collapse so when they collapse they do not look like vertical 
okay, and near perpendicular slopes anymore. So there are three, four types. Just keep it these two. Page number four fifty one and four fifty two. Okay, so I'm done with cliff. This one landform. The next landform okay, is uh, beaches. What are beaches? How are they formed? And what are the features of the beaches? So beaches are essentially the depositional features along the coast. They comprise sand. They comprise a shingle. Sand, a shingle. Sometimes even finer muds and. Uh, they are made up of this one the beaches extend both above and below the waters they are the consequence of wave action yes even pebbles and stones shingles they also will have pebbles and the stones and they extend both above and below the water level beaches are primarily formed because of wave action but then we also have beaches which are contributed by the riverine depositions so primary factor in the beach formation is the wave action the wave action it breaks down the rocks and it will accumulate on the coast but then i said the beaches can also include riverine deposits like the areas which have uh, estuaries the areas that have uh, like a deltas so they they can also be because of riverine deposits now, what are the parts of the beach? So this is the gentle slope here, and this is the sea level. This is the mean sea level. This is the high tide. This is the low tide. The high tide, the low tide. Now, a high tide, this part remains submerged. Okay, uh, this is the mean sea level. So the beach, which is here, this is the upper beach and upper beach comprises of coarser deposits and this is the landward part this is mostly the exposed part and the the mean sea level and below this this is the lower beach this will have finer sediments and this is the seaward part so beaches are depositional features along the coast. They comprise of sand, shingle, pebbles, stones. They are formed because of wave action and the depositions by the waves. They are also contributed to by riverine deposits. They also have river deposits along the deltas, along the estuaries. And the beaches has different parts. The different parts above and below the mean sea level. The mean sea level and above is called as the upper beach this is the landward part and it has coarser deposits it has more coarse and larger deposits and below the mean sea level is called as the lower beach and it is having more fine deposits and it is a seaward part of the beach so here all depositions are here seaward part now there is one more part is called as the storm beach this is the landward location of depositions for the highest and the largest waves what we mean by this is on this maybe the waves the waves generally come till here so this is the beach then this this becomes the beach the upper beach but what happens sometimes is right up to this part here maybe the strongest wave can come storms can come the strongest wave can come and the storms can come so in this case ye jo part hai beach ka then this beach is referred to as the storm beach the storm beach has the effect of waves but it has the effect of waves under the strongest of the waves so this becomes the location for this is the storm beach the land word limit of the strongest waves it's called as storm beach so part of beach includes the upper beach the lower beach and the storm beach now there is a fourth part uh, under water there are depositions of low 
ridges and these are called as berms under water there are depositions of low ridges and they are called as berms b e r m s so if this is the coast here the waves this is the mean sea level mean sea level so somewhere this is the shelf yahan se yahan tak shayad beach hai this is the upper beach this is the lower beach you go down now this becomes continental shelf okay so in the lower beach itself so somewhere here okay there can be small amount of accumulations like a ridge this is called as the berms b e r m s berms page number 455 dekho please samindra singh page number page number 455 there's a diagram that tells you what berms are so that's about the beaches what are beaches how are they formed what are the uh, parts of the beach now uh, as a conclusion okay nothing much to add conclusion may please mention that okay uh, beaches are one type of landforms uh, they essentially become part of the coast itself and they may have resources so in parts of india we do have what's called as placer deposits also sand mining monazite sands placer deposits hain sand mining hain and do mention tourism that the beaches are impacted by the coastline okay changes because of climate change so keep the discussion towards the applied human aspects and be through it and you can always talk about uh, how beaches can be protected you can have a discussion on protecting the beaches basically shore management mein aa jayega in shore management we can protect the beaches beach protection like you can have uh, walls constructed we can have groins g r o y n e s groins constructed so on those lines uh, finish off the discussion now one of you is asking me about what are rip currents if this is the coast this is the main wave coming towards the coast it strikes and one component of the waves goes along with the coast and one component comes back the one that goes this is the coastline this is the land these are the waves striking when the waves strike what happens is one resolution of the wave is along the coast okay so some water moves along the coast we call this as long shore and one component starts coming back what starts coming back this is called as the back wash and if it is strong enough then it's also called as the rip current and the back wash and the rip current these are under the water they also referred to as the tow tow current this is the onward current the onward waves and the waves when they come back backwash rip currents they are stronger also called as the tow current and the one that goes along the coast is called as the long shore rip